Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. While standing, let's quickly say a word of prayer. Father, we thank you and we honor you for the RON conference. We thank you for the privilege of hearing you speak, seeing you walk in our midst, and becoming testaments of your power and your grace. Lord, we thank you for this great, mighty vision. Thank you for giving us an opportunity to tabernacle in your presence again. We pray by the power of the Holy Spirit that tonight's meeting will indeed shift us to new dimensions in the Spirit. In the name of Jesus, that whilst the word is coming, let lives be transformed. Let the sick be healed. Let the oppressed be delivered. And Lord, we pray that all who are connecting from across the globe, let tonight be their night in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. God bless you. Please be seated. Only, it is only when we get to heaven that we will really be able to comprehend the depth of the transformation that has happened in lives to lives as a result of Pastor Jerry and his dear wife. Um, let me tell you the truth. There is no, there is no human mechanism of measuring spiritual impact. All the indices that we have are only a failed attempt to give us a picture of the kinds of transformation. There are people today who have been saved simply because of their encounter with the man of God, either through his teachings, but more importantly, the prayer platform. Hallelujah. The lives that have been changed, the lives that have been healed, the discipline that has come upon many believers to be consistent in their prayer lives. It, it was as though many people were praying for a, a way to be guided into consistency. This was the culture of the early church. That was why they were extremely powerful. They had what they called the hour of prayer. It was while Peter and John were on their way to honor that mystery that a man's miracle happened. And so, Pastor Jerry and your dear wife, I truly love you, and we honor and salute what God has done and continues to do in and through your life across the nations of the earth. And, and I say this sincerely from my heart. We must learn to celebrate and honor people who God is used. Listen, let me tell you the truth. Hold on, please, just for a moment. I can tell you firsthand that it takes tremendous sacrifice as a lifestyle and then spiritual discipline and capacity to be able to capture some things from the realm of the spirit and to reveal it to a generation. And if and when we find people who can so labor to give their all, they are worthy of our honor. Can you bless Pastor Jerry and his dear wife again one more time? Thank you, Pastor Jerry. God bless you. Bless your dear wife. In the name of Jesus Christ. When I held her hands to greet her, I said, you have the strength of 30 men in one. Incredibly amazing woman of God. Let's bless her again. Please be seated. You know, interestingly, Pastor Jerry began to touch on my teaching tonight. And I was just watching him and rejoicing over the power of discernment and exactitude in the spirit. I'll be sharing with us as my contribution um, for this conference a few truths, especially about the ministry of the Holy Spirit tonight that I think would help and guide us. Conferences like this help to build us, not just for the year, but to equip us to make strategic progress. First, in our spiritual lives, 
and then it extends to every aspect of our lives. We rise in this kingdom by and through our access to light. It takes more than desire to rise. We must access high level spiritual illumination. Hallelujah. So let's look at a few scriptures and then see how God will help us in this service. And for those who are following from across the globe, please connect with your heart. We're here at Ron Conference and we believe in the name of Jesus that as it happens here, so it will happen to you wherever you are in the name of Jesus. Psalm 18 and verse 29. Psalm 18 and verse 29. It says, For by thee I have run through a troop, and by my God I have leaped over a wall. If you remove for by thee, and you remove by my God, this is how that statement will be read. I have run through a troop, I have leaped over a wall. That will sound like a man's ability, a man's excellency. And here he tells us that if you ever see me run through a troop and you ever see me leap over a wall, make no mistakes about it. There is an agency that was outsourced beyond my ability. It says, for by thee, I have run through a troop. Many times in our world, we would not like to read the first three words because it is always very marketable to give a picture of invincibility and human power. It looks very, very disappointing when you express the semblance of weakness with respect to God's power. We usually would like to take credit behind the exploits that we do as humans. But here is a very wise man, not only telling you his exploits, but connecting the basis for it. For by thee, are we together already? I have run through a troop, and by my God, I have leaped over a wall. Second scripture, please. First Samuel chapter 12 and verse 6. Prophet Samuel said something there very, very interesting and powerful. And Samuel said unto the people, It is the Lord that advanced Moses and Aaron, and that brought your fathers up out of the land of Egypt. It is the Lord that advanced Moses. It is the Lord that advanced Moses. If you were to look at Moses and Aaron, you would simply see a prophet who kept moving from one level of grace, one level of achievement to the other. And here is the prophet saying, behind the fearful exploits of the man Moses and even Aaron, there was an invisible hand, the Lord himself, that advanced Moses and Aaron. A scripture that has become a personal anthem in my life is 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 5. It's a scripture that has ministered very deeply through the years. It says, not that we are sufficient of ourselves. Very profound admission to think anything as of ourselves. But it says straight up that our sufficiency, you know what sufficiency is? The capacity to rise up to the occasion, never disappointing. When you are sufficient, it means you are always in order. When you are sufficient, it means there is no possibility for disappointment from your own end. And he says that capacity, that faculty to always live up to expectations, he said no man by himself, unassisted, possesses that ability to always meet up standards. He says, our sufficiency is of God. Let's read verse 6. He says, who has made us abled? He gave us an ability. He has made us abled ministers. Hallelujah. Now, in this kingdom, God designed this kingdom to function in a way that you will always meet points in your Christian experiences that would reveal to you how helpless or incapacitated you are. It was intentionally designed by God. It was a system to keep us in need of him as well as reveal our pride that happens after little results. Are we together now? So no matter how godless or no matter how sincere 
you are. Eventually, you will meet occasions in your life where you will be given the liberty, even without God, if you choose, to stretch your creativity, your intelligence, your imagination. And God will insist that by your imagination and your wisdom, you are not able to solve that problem. In that state, you are left with two choices. Number one, to break down in humility and admit that you are limited. And from that standpoint of humility, you now approach the all-sufficient God because his strength does not come upon strength. When his strength comes and meets strength, it goes back. Until what you call strength is depleted, then you now see the value of his strength upon your weakness. When Paul cried to him because of the thorn in his flesh, he simply gave him this answer. My strength is sufficient in your weakness. Paul, for as long as you believe that it was because you are a scribe, for as long as you believe that it's in the vastness of your education, my strength has no ministry in your life. I can be patient even if it's for 10 years and leave you to exhaust everything that looks like God. Are we together? There are many, many people today that the delay in their life is God waiting for them to exhaust what looks like strength. So that you do not confuse the person who gave you that result. Remember in Deuteronomy chapter 8, he began to warn them. He said, let it not be that when you have built houses, you have done this and that, that you will say. God does not take that kind of risk with men. The difference has to be clear that he's the one behind it. Are we together? That means the earlier a man comes to a point of admission that I am limited, you have designed your speed system. That your life will perpetually be pegged at the instance and at the level of your pride. Provided you do not see the need for the help of God. Are we, are we following now? Yes. Now You do not have to be an evil person. You just have to be human. Hallelujah. It takes a lot for a natural man to come to a point where you see and admit that you are limited. It is not usual with men because from the world system, the applause you receive is to the degree to which they perceive you to be superhuman or invincible. When you watch programs, you see people who display talents and the ones who display unusual talents are usually awarded. So it is, it is not human to admit weakness. There has to be a process that you pass through with God that brings you to a point where you acknowledge that our sufficiency is not of ourselves. Are we still together now? Yes. Jesus, knowing this about men, set that example with himself. Can you imagine that the God of the heavens, the God of creation, when he stripped himself and came as a little baby at age 30, Jesus himself refused to start ministry or to start any exploit for that matter, even though he was born the word. But he was not born a man. But the moment he became a man, he knew that the weaknesses in all men was also in him. The Bible says he was in every way tempted. Is that in your Bible? Yes. And so, immediately without waste of time, he went straight to embrace the ministry of the Spirit. You would read the Bible and see how Jesus declared helplessness about himself as though he forgot he were God. I can of my own self do nothing. Realize who is speaking, the word incarnate. How could you make such a statement that almost sounds like blasphemy that I can of my own? Haven't told them before your Abraham, before your father Abraham was I am. Now you are saying I can of my own do nothing. Hallelujah. And he embraced the ministry of the Holy Spirit and that opened him to an incredible and an invincible life. He brought dimensions of kingdom reality that many of the people only read in scripture. And the scribes and the Pharisees began to wonder. Then they started bringing all kinds of descriptions to explain 
what they were seeing. For instance, in one incident, they said, this man is Beelzebub. He has to use the prince of demons because it is not human. How would you speak and then demons just leave? They didn't see that kind of thing. You had to stone the one possessed together with the demons to die, two of them. You destroy the body, then the demon looks for another body. Here is a man who can separate with surgical precision the problem from the victim and preserve the victim while the problem goes away. And they said, no, this is not by human strength. Hallelujah. When they heard him speak, even in the synagogue, he displayed a level of wisdom. They wondered, what sort of wisdom is this? And now Jesus got to a point with the disciples. At this point, the disciples were confused. They were perplexed, wondering, what kind of man are you? We grew up with you, knowing your earthly father and your mother, but you are displaying possibilities that are beyond the realm and the scope of human intelligence. Now he begins to introduce them to this personality called the Holy Spirit. Are we together now? Notice that Jesus was not in a hurry to talk to them about the Holy Spirit. When he started his mentorship session with them, you would think the first topic he should go to was the topic of the Spirit. He began with what we call the Beatitudes, teaching them on the realities of the kingdom, bringing to their awareness a new culture. I always wondered why he delayed on the subject of the Holy Spirit. Notice that the teaching coincided with their frustrations. They were angry and started asking themselves, look, we left all to follow you. What is in this? The more they acknowledged their weaknesses, they were pushing him to that subject. Are we together now? Finally, they get to the subject of the Holy Spirit. Then he begins to talk to them about this paraclete, this one whom they could not see, but he credited his exploits, even as the word incarnate to the Spirit. He began to use names like comforter, he began to use names like the spirit of truth. He began to use names like helper. Now, at that point, they did not understand. Are we together now? When we get to John 16, that should be John 16. Give us verse 12. He says, I have many things to say unto you. Jesus himself. Jesus did not hide his frustration even in mentoring the disciples because they were carnally minded. And the Bible says that a carnal man, a natural man, cannot receive of spiritual things. He said, I have many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. 13, he says, how be it? In other words, find comfort. When he, the spirit of truth, is come, he says he will guide you into how many? All truth. All truth. The God that knows all truth must be fearful. He will guide you into all truth. Then he says, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and then he will show you things to come. The disciples thought they understood what Jesus said quite honestly. They did not understand what Jesus said because if you really understand... If, if, if you understood what Jesus said, there are some questions that should follow. They didn't ask it, meaning they were not interested. All they were interested in was the restoration of the kingdom of Israel, where there would be a king and they would get their rewards for living, fishing, and following Jesus. That was all their concern. They didn't follow him just because of love. Here was someone who had proposed a more superior life. And they hoped that with his invincible power, he would dethrone Herod one day and be king. Then they would be members of his cabinet. That was the whole journey of their discipleship. There was nothing eternal or souls. That was none of their business. That was why when Jesus died, they were angry. When he said he was leaving, they said, where are you going to? We left our wives. We left fishing. You have troubled the Roman government and you are leaving. It was not compassion. It was anger. They said, you are not going anywhere. You fermented trouble all over Rome. Now you want to leave. Peter said, you are not going. It is the reason why when they finally caught Jesus, their hopes were dashed. This man who raised the dead, so there is weakness in you. Judas was so confident about his power, he could even make money from him. Because he, he would make money because he knew that if they came to catch Jesus, he would make a mess of them. That was why Judas could not even use the money. 
These guys had so trusted the invincibility of Jesus. They started inventing skills to cast out of that power. Now, follow me closely, please. Are we together now? Now Jesus gives himself to die. And all of them are amazed. Peter is disappointed. The disciples run away. Then he leaves to die. And Peter, in his frustration, goes back to fishing. I wasted three and a half years of my life following someone who proposed a more superior way of living. Let me not make a fool of myself. And the Bible says in John chapter 21 that Peter said, I go a fishing. And the disciples say, we go with you. In other words, look, this is over. Let's just be on our way going. Suddenly, while they were at the seashore, laboring for nothing. Because you see, there are times, you may have heard me say, when your net is correct. There are times when your location is correct, the sea. There are times when your skill is correct, yet you will still not catch fish. I do not see anything wrong as far as producing results is concerned. Peter was a skilled fisherman. His nets were the right tools. The boat was there. The sea was the right place, yet there was no catch. Now, that was, it was at that point that Jesus showed up. And he looks at them and says, little children, have you any catch? And Peter wondering, who is this man? Notice every time Jesus saw insufficiency, he quickly rushed to explain something. There is something with the dealings of God with men that the weakness of men attracts God so much to them because it is, is a vocal expression of the need for his ministry in their lives. Are we together now? Every in the healing of Jesus, Anytime people express weakness and limitation, he, he responded to them immediately, including blind Bartimeo, thou son of David. I don't know what is the formula for getting your attention, but please, by all means, I just know you are the son of David. Have mercy on me. The woman with the issue of blood. Every time Jesus saw people declaring their weakness and their need for him or for God, he responded. This is a very powerful secret. I know why I'm telling you this because there are so many people who wonder why the Holy Ghost cannot do much in them because you are approaching God from a standpoint of strength and sufficiency and the Holy Spirit is so gentle that your pride is a voice that can drive him. It is true. It is the reason why in using men, he will usually use very weak men. Ordinary men that do not have the comeliness that you may think should be desired. So that the excellency of power, you can see the difference between the man and the man anointed. Are we together? Yeah. So Jesus began to talk to them about the Holy Spirit. And then... He spoke very profoundly when they received the Holy Ghost. They began to understand the things that he said. Then we get to the Pauline epistle. This strange man who now had an encounter with the Spirit. And he made a very profound statement. Romans 8.26. I hope and pray that we are following. Romans 8.26. Let's read together if you can see it. Ready? One to read. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. Please stop. The Bible says that same Spirit, that there are many things that he does in the life of the believer. And among them, Paul is teaching them by revelation that the Holy Spirit can help our infirmity. The word infirmity there was not accurately translated because it would look like sickness. The word there should be limitation, not just bodily or um, maybe some kind of biological deformity. Likewise, the Spirit also helped our limitations. That every time a man is limited, spiritually, financially, organizationally, you are calling for the help and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. But that rule number one, you must come to a point where you acknowledge your limitation. This is not, this is not some kind of demeaning who you are in Christ. It's a state of acceptance and admission that except God helps me. Now you understand the scripture. It is by thee that I run through a troop. It is by my God that I leap over a wall. He took out time to emphasize the basis for his results. 
Hallelujah. Nicodemus comes to Jesus by night and says, Rabbi, we know that thou art a man sent from God. John chapter 3 from verse 1 and 2. He says, for no man can do these miracles and accept the Lord be with him. There are results that you cannot get alone except the Lord be with you. In fact, there are dimensions of results in this kingdom that implicate you immediately that you have done business with the realm of the spirit, whether diabolically or genuinely. But out of the assistance of the realm of the spirit, there are heights you cannot attain. It is not given unto men. Whether it is Janus and Jambes or Moses, turning a rod to a snake needs power. Whether it is by God or by magic, in either ways, there has to be a partnership with the realm of the spirit. Why am I saying this? Because there are people in this conference who this year you will command very strange order of results in the name of Jesus Christ. That you will not only celebrate what God is doing in the life of your man of God and his dear wife, but that you will access a potent secret. By media, when you look at your life, People will have to call you and say, tell me the truth. Is there anything you need to open up to me about? Because I do not understand the you of January and the you of now. What suddenly happened? When they looked at Saul, they said, when has Saul become a prophet? What happened to you? We knew when you left home helplessly, clueless. With no, if you were that much of a prophet, why did you have to look for a donkey for three days? That now you are returning with precision and even prophesying. Let me speak over someone in the name of Jesus who is the son of the living God. I decree and declare by God who helps men and by the power that raised Christ from the dead. You will access superior help from the spirit and begin to command results in the name of Jesus Christ. Please sit. Behind the exploits of great men in the kingdom is the help of and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Unassisted by the spirit of grace, you cannot produce results that is consistent with the might and the power of God. No man can do these things except God be with him. No man can do these things except God be with him. The Bible says, and the Lord walking with them, confirming the word with signs following. The Lord walking with them, confirming the word following. You read from scripture and you read even through modern history. All of the men and women, especially within the church circle, who were mightily used by God in their generations. They were men and women, some uneducated, some weak. Some came from backgrounds of all kinds of things. Regardless of those limitations, you listen to their story. The punchline in their story is when they encountered this spirit of God called the Holy Spirit. At that point, things began to shift in their lives. Ordinary women encountered the Spirit of God. And some of them, though naive, though uneducated, inexposed, he began to help them and they commanded levels of dominion and power that was global. Regardless the limitations that came with their generation. Let me tell you one truth. There is no describing how far the Spirit of God is able to take a man and to help a man. I am saying it to you today. If you ever see anybody that you admire, whether used by God in ministry like your man of God or in business, any dimension of kingdom exploit, provided it is revealing Jesus, the signature of the Spirit must be there. By this teaching, immediately God is telling someone, if you don't give up on your strength, you will only recycle last year, this year. Regardless what prophecy comes, by ignoring the Holy Spirit, you will abort the potency of the word. The Bible said the seed was the word, yet it still died because of the soil it came upon. Are we together now? I learned this very early. How helpless a man can be in ministry. Respectfully speaking, there are people in ministry struggling from pillar to post, trying all kinds of formulas in isolation to the ministry and the help of the Holy Spirit. And they find out that by the arm of the flesh shall no man prevail. 
The world is too busy, too selfish, and too wicked for people to dedicate their attention to you. It takes a force that is not human to coordinate people to look at you, know you love. No, no. Except you do not, you've not lived long enough in this world. What will make a man wake up from his house and think about you and call you and say, for the rest of your life, I want to bless you? That man who wants to bless you has relatives who are in need. It does not just happen. Listen to me very carefully. You are a man of God just because you are sincere and a person of character. It's not enough to make people leave their homes to come and to submit, to sit down, to listen and to learn. No, no, no. How about resources? It is one thing to have your skill like Peter and you will be at the sea and yet you will not catch fish. At that point, you don't need fishing again. You need a superior dimension of help. It is not because you are in Abia. It is simply because there is a dimension of grace and help that you have not accessed. This is my assignment tonight to introduce you to take away struggling and weariness and bring us to a point where you are empowered by a dimension of sufficiency that you will walk out of this meeting tonight rejoicing knowing that every prophetic word that came from the man of God to you was spoken because he expected that in receiving it you will honor the ministry of the Holy Spirit to make it come to pass. If Jesus, the son of the living God, did not ignore the ministry of the Holy Spirit, as the word incarnate, he made himself so helpless, the Bible even said, of no reputation. And he would speak again and again by the Spirit. The Spirit was behind the mighty things that Jesus did. A carpenter's son who became the savior of the world. In fact, the Bible even says, if that same Spirit that raised him, raised him, that body was lying down there and the spirit of grace came, raised him back to life again. Hallelujah. Yeah. We have ignored the ministry of the Holy Spirit largely and even those who talk about the Holy Spirit only focus on his power. And they do not even care about a relationship to understand the dynamics of his help. In Acts chapter 1 and verse 8, the most classic scripture that talks about the coming of the Holy Spirit. This was a statement by Jesus himself. He said, but you shall receive power after. Somebody say power after. The sequence matters. Power after. Power is only relevant when it comes after. Not power before. Not power during. Power after the Holy Ghost. Power after the Holy Ghost. Power after the Holy Ghost. Wisdom after the Holy Ghost. Miracles after the Holy Ghost. He must precede them all and he must be greater than them all. But here is what we do. Power through or by the Holy Ghost. We are not interested in the relationship. I hear you hold power to heal the sick, to open up doors, to bring finances. Can you borrow me that power so I can shine while you stand? I don't need you. I just know that something about you can make me powerful. But follow the protocol. Power after. Power after. Check this against your, the, your Christian pursuit. If your power, your quest for power is before the ministry of the Holy Ghost, you are already at the corridors of compromise. Mm -mm. When God calls you, he does not give you power. When he calls you, he gives you himself. He said, come, follow me, not follow it. Follow me. When God calls you, he does not even give you an assignment. Your calling is to God. Your mission is now to the world. When he calls people, he does not call them to do things. He calls them to follow him. Follow me and I will make you. When I make you, I now send you. The empowerment is at the point of being sent, not being called. You see, when he calls you, you don't need power. You need humility to learn. When he sends you, he now sends you with power. Most of us have been called, but we have not been sent. And the reason is you will know you have not been sent because the power that backs up your being sent has not been given. But the itch to go it is true that your calling is genuine, but have you been sent? 
He said, when I sent you, lackest thou anything? The plethora of lack and insufficiency is proof that the door has not been opened for you. That means you should stay, follow me, not follow it. I don't know if God is speaking to someone. He's saying many things to many of us. For some of us, God is saying, mark time with this ministry thing and get back to the secret place. The truth is that the power that follows the assignment has not yet come. You cannot hide, you cannot hide power. It's like pregnancy. A woman who is nine months and is not aware, will she look normal? Even if she does not know what is wrong, she cannot be normal, not at nine months. Such as I have. My point is, when did he know he had it? Because once upon a time, he did not have it. And he knew he didn't have it. Now he has the boldness to say, Mr., I know what I have and I, don't, I know what I do not have. I'm still learning about prosperity, silver and gold I do not have. I'm still learning. I can't, I can't guarantee on that. But this one, I have it already. Are we together now? The Holy Spirit, the Spirit helped our infirmities. Let me just show you quickly and then we pray. Three ways the Holy Spirit helps men to become mighty and to advance. You call it a run conference. I hope you know what progress is. Please look up. Progress means your next step must always be greater than your first step, your initial one. If your next step is at the same level with the former one, it is not called progress. It is called maintenance. Listen, watch this. If I move this way, there is motion, but this cannot be called progress. For it to be called progress, my next step must be beyond the former one. The next one must be, so if you say I should come, if you say I should run and I do this, am I running? The next step has to be is that true? That means your least month this year should be January. If any month by any means becomes greater than January in result and impact, you have compromised on the definition of progress. For the path of the just. Is that still in your Bible? It's as a shining light that shineth more and more. I like the word more and more. More and more. It says unto the perfect day. So let's deal with this in a few minutes that we have. Is God helping us? The help of the Spirit. The secret behind the sufficiency of ordinary men. The principal factor that is responsible for the mysterious rising and the results that ordinary men command as far as the revelation of Jesus is concerned in their world. Now you know by now that when I talk about producing results, it is with respect to the revelation of Jesus and bringing him glory. When we teach from a kingdom perspective, we don't just teach from a standpoint of an ambition and mundane desire to make things happen. Our entire pursuit, the moment we talk about result, it is with respect to the revelation of Jesus. You remove that out of the equation, your pursuit does not have any value. What gives value to prosperity, anointing, ministry, is that in that activity, Jesus is revealed and Jesus is glorified. Is that true? Yes. It's called the reflection principle. In John 17 and verse 1, Jesus lifted up his eyes to heaven and prayed a prayer and says, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son that thy son may glorify thee. So how is this, the father glorified? When he glorifies the son. Are we together? Number one. How does the Holy Spirit help the believer to rise, to excel, to command results in this kingdom? Number one, by revealing the mind or the will of God. The first dimension of the help of the Spirit to the believer is the revelation of the mind or the will of God. 
This is very, very important. Two scriptures very quickly. Romans chapter 8, please, and verse 27. Romans 8, 27. The Bible says, And he that searcheth the heart knoweth what is the mind of the spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Please, someone shout it. Say the will of God. Will of God. One more time. Say the will of God. Now, the way God designed the administration of spiritual power, please look up. The administration of spiritual power and even the ministry of the Holy Spirit is that everything revolves around the will of God. Are we together now? The assignment of the power of God is to bring you into the will of God or to keep you in the will of God. Outside of the will of God, the power of God has no assignment. Listen very carefully. One of the ways you attract the power of God is staying in the will of God. If you are out of the will of God and he brings his power called his mercy, the assignment of that dimension of his power is to bring you into the will of God. Is that true? So it's important as a rule of thumb, the entire circumference of the believer's life must revolve around and within the will of God. If and when you are in the will of God, the power of God keeps you. And you, you, once you are in the will of God, that is where your immunity is established. Once you are in the will of God, that is when your relevance, the moment you are outside of the will of God, you are outside of the region where you make yourself a prey to Satan. Are we together now? Provided the prodigal son was in the house, there was nothing that could happen to him. No lack, no insufficiency. The moment he went out of the house and out of the covering of his father, depletion began until he got to a point where he fed with the swine. Notice that in his restoration, all that he did was to return back home. That was it. That was all he did to return back home. He said, I will arise and I will go to my father and I will say, Father, I have sinned against you and against heaven. I am not worthy to be called your son. Take me as one of your slaves. And he got up and did exactly what he said he would do. He's returning back to the house. Celebration began immediately. Is someone learning? So when the Holy Spirit helps men, he reveals to us the will of God for our lives part time. Romans chapter 12, please. When you read from verse 1 and 2, it says, I beseech you therefore by the mercies of God that ye present or offer your bodies unto God a living sacrifice. He calls it holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable act of worship or service. Verse 2 says, do not be conformed to this world. Listen carefully now. It says, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good an acceptable and perfect will of God. So everything the Holy Ghost does through the word in your mind is to bring you and keep you in the will of God. Are we together? It is the assignment of the Holy Ghost to bring you into the will of God. Jesus himself found where it was written concerning him. Is that in your Bible? Luke chapter 4. He found where it was written concerning him and then he began to quote the scripture or to read it. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. When he was done, he said, this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. He found where it was written concerning him. And the Bible says when the Holy Ghost comes, he will guide you in, in all truth including the will of God. There are many people today, listen carefully please, there are many people today who are farming like Elisha, whereas their destiny is to be prophets over nations. It is the assignment of the Holy Spirit. There is no guessing the will of God. You don't even know it. There is no possibility of knowing it. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of the Father. The Bible said no man knows what is in the heart of a man except the spirit of that man. The moment you begin to pray in the spirit, I wish we had time to deal with this. Among the many things that happen is that 
you cooperate with the Holy Spirit to begin to search the archives in the mind of the Father. What is in the heart of the Father for you in 2023? It is a risk to start taking steps on assumption. You have to wait until the will comes. The trigger for your action is the knowledge of the will. As a man of God, don't assume that God wants you to expand. Don't assume that God wants you to start doing church. Don't assume that God wants you to organize a healing meeting. No, it is important that you walk your your confidence is knowing that you are in the will of God. In fact, Apostle John was teaching us on prayer and he said, this is the confidence that we have. Is that still in your Bible? That when we ask anything according to his will, we know that he heareth us. So I don't know that I'm hurt just because of the volume of what I'm saying or because of the time expended in prayer, as important as that is. My confidence is that I am, God is so determined to make us walk in his will that he created a system of capturing that will as scripture and still left it, still in addition with the Holy Spirit, so that we are entire in his will. Someone say the will of God. Say it again. There are many of us right now, we need to go back and ask God. This movement have been moving around the circle. Today, I think I'm a man of God. Tomorrow, maybe a businessman. Next week, I, 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 it's like I had Zamfara. Then next week, it's like I had Potakot. You need to take away that, those haziness. Where Satan deceives believers is becoming like an angel of light. And that whole assignment is to make you sincerely veer out of the will of God. Satan does not necessarily need to fight you by attacking you. If he can take you out of the will of God, it was designed trying to destroy you by default. Is someone learning? It is the assignment of the Holy Ghost. You ask your man of God, how did he start his prayer platform? If you think it's just luck, do it. That's when you will see the difference between the will of God and the strength of a man. When it is the will of God, simple and even foolish things produce results that for your lifetime you cannot explain because the jealousy of God is behind it. God can speak to a man. I remember years ago, this was way before just, you know, social media was just at its infancy in Africa when God gave me a word. At that point, he told me, he said, do not, he was in the place of prayer. He said, carry your teachings, raw audio, not really very clear, the best of whatever we could do at that time. And he said, all you need to do, this is my instruction, this is what I want. Put it and make it available for people and my angel will take it to the nations of the earth. That foolish instruction. You see, you can copy today and it will not work because it didn't come as a revelation of the will of God. This is the danger of blindly copying things. You can be inspired, but be sure you are in the will of God. Moses said, I'm not going to go and embarrass myself before Pharaoh. One, verify you are the one sending me. Number two, give me a sign. I know who Pharaoh is. When he stood before Pharaoh and said, Thus said the God of the Hebrews, let my people go. You would think Pharaoh say, my God. I'm sorry, who is that God that I offended? He laughed and he said, you must be silly Moses. I think you've forgotten that this is Egypt, the center of wizardry. So this is all you came to do to embarrass yourself here? Janus and Jambers, come and show him that if it is a rod he brought to become a snake, go back and tell your God is not powerful enough. And they turned it effortlessly. You would think because the power of God were there automatically, it should become the rod of, um, of, of Janus and Jamba should not even become a serpent. But it became a serpent right there. To the point that you could not know which one is real or which one is fake. But then God did something powerful. The rod of Moses swallowed the rod of, 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 of Pharaoh and did not increase in size. And he held one and kept it. The God of heaven. Listen to me. Our confidence in doing the things that we do is knowing that we have paid the price with the Spirit to verify and re-verify that we are in the will of God. 
when you are in the will of God, it does not matter who believes or who does not believe. The most important thing is that the jealousy of the one who sends you is behind and before you. For someone, God can speak to you and say, listen, people in Abia State are waiting. You are the next entrepreneur to rise. And while he's speaking, one of the ways you will know that God is speaking to you is because you cannot do what he's saying by your strength. If God tells you something you have the power to do, most likely he's not the one you heard. He will tell you what only him can do through you. If it is God that you hear what you heard should make you afraid. It should make you run back to him and say, so how do we make this happen? How do you look at an ordinary man, no one, say build an ark that will take all the animals? Three stories. He didn't say, are you an architect? He didn't say, have you tried building a small boat? That's God for you. God can look at someone you have never stood before any president and he will speak to you say the 12 presidents I'm sending you to make sure you preach Christ to them and while he's speaking you do not even have a passport God for you he will speak in a way that you must return back to him for the remaining details if it is not God listen one of the ways you know you are in the will of God is you will never hear everything the first time mm -mm. there are details he will hide and it is only your hunger that will take you. Hallelujah. The will of God. Let's finish up. Number two. How does the Holy Spirit help the saints to rise and to excel? The ministry of guidance. The Holy Spirit helps men. By guiding them number one is the revelation of the will of God number two is to guide you John 16 we read it earlier 12 and 13 13 says that when he the spirit of truth is come he will guide you into all truth please look up this is powerful I wish I had time to explain this scripture for you. That means even when you are standing in the truth, you must be guided for it to profit you. Just because you are in proximity with the truth does not mean you will be blessed by it. The truth can kill. Just because it is truth does not mean it will bless automatically. Truth is like a knife. You can hold a knife in a way that it will injure you. A knife that is supposed to cut the vegetable to make the food that we eat. Because you did not hold it well, it can still injure you. Women will tell you there are times that they did not hold the knife well. And they ended up injuring themselves. A beautiful tool that was supposed to help enhance your efficiency. When Satan tries to use a lie and it does not work, he will use the truth to kill you. Ask Jesus. When he came to Jesus, he said, turn this stone to bread. Jesus said, it is written. The next time Satan spoke, he said, it is written too. Since it is truth, let's use truth now. It is written. Sanctify them by your truth, he says. Thy word is truth. So it is not every time he will come looking like a wizard. There are times he will speak like a preacher and mislead you with relevant scriptures into derision. Just because it is truth does not mean it will bless you. The Holy Ghost. This is where many people who just embrace scripture and ignore the Holy Spirit. This is a piece of literature. This is a piece of archaeology. This is a piece of history. When you open it, it is a book. When the scrolls are unlocked, it becomes a word. This book you see must be both opened and unlocked. There are seals that close it. It is opened to the optical eyes, but not yet opened in the spirit. And it is dangerous to read the book when it is just open and not unlocked. Because you will find many coincidences. At the end of it, you will end up hating the Bible. Because it will look like a mix of nonsense. Written by people, arguments here and there. A lying spirit came from the Lord. What does that mean? Do not be over-righteous. What does that mean? Because all those things are unfruitful to the mind if the only thing you do is to open the book. Only the spirit sustains the, the capacity. And you will see a scripture you'll be reading forever. And you will stand in tears. There are times that you can carry one verse for days and you are sitting there and it's as if you found a gold mine and you are rejoicing over a scripture, you quote it and someone says, that's nice, you are learning scripture, but something 
in the name of Jesus, the miracle of open eyes, guided by the Spirit, in the name of Jesus, may that begin to walk in your life from tonight. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit guides men. There are various ways he guides. There is a difference between leading and guiding. Or there is a difference between direction and guidance. Let me tell you how to direct. Please look up. If I'm to direct you out of this auditorium, here's what I'm going to say. Move straight, turn right, and be on your way. That's direction. Guidance will say, follow this way. There is a step. Be careful. That step can hurt you. So just because you know the road, you do not know the contours, the very things. The Bible says the Holy Spirit guides. He does not just lead. He leads, but he guides. Many of you have been led. You need guidance. You are in the place of the will of God, but how to navigate the steps? Now you do not know. He told you this man is the one who God will use to lift you. Now you are with him, but what do you do? Do you walk up to him and say, you have been wasting my time? God said you are the one who will lift. You see, now direction is correct, but you need guidance. It's the Holy Spirit who will guide you and say, you know what? Um, take a meal and just go and give him and bless him and don't say anything. That's guidance. You now go there and say, oh, who is this? What do you do? I am so, 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 and so. Thank you. You are the kind of person we are looking for. See me tomorrow. Two of you can be led, but only one was guided. Most people have not opened up themselves to be guided by the Spirit. You can be in the right environment and still weary yourself. You need to pray, guide me, guide me, guide me. Spirit of the living God, guide me, guide me. For when he guides you, in addition to his leadership, there is no darkness for you. Eventually, it may not make sense while he's guiding you. Ladies and gentlemen, please hear me. It is like driving again. When you plot the map on your phone of a location, it tells you, okay, you will get there in one hour, you see. But it doesn't just tell you the location. It keeps zooming and you, you keep finding out that it is helping you. Is that true? And there are times you go to a road and it is closed. It will reroute it again and show you how to still get there. Direction is not a problem. It was not your fault. Someone decided to put a barricade on what would have been the road. It takes guidance. It now reroutes and recalculates the time. Guidance. Let's finish up. The last way the Holy Spirit helps the believer to rise, to excel, to make impact and advancement for the kingdom is through the ministry of empowerment. The third dimension of his help is through empowerment. Mm. This is powerful. He empowers us. It is true. And there are two dimensions to this empowerment. There is the empowerment within and there is the empowerment upon. This is where we pray. The empowerment within has the assignment to produce Christ-likeness, to produce growth and maturity. Every time you see spiritual immaturity, there is no stature and character in the believer. He has ignored the ministry of empowerment within. He said, my little children of whom I travail until Christ be formed in you. When the Holy Spirit empowers you, regardless where you came from, regardless the natural traits and limitations that came with where you came from, he will grant you grace. There are times that you who should be angry and speak to anybody and say, when I'm angry, even God gives way. You see, all those kinds of things, they, they fade away because there is an empowerment within. Most of us do not have that strength in the inner man. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10, I like Amplified. It says, finally be strong in the Lord. Amplified says, draw your strength from him and be empowered through your union with him. There is an implication. If Christ dwells in you in truth, there must be an effulgence of the character of the kingdom. Is that true? I should know 
that Christ is at work in you because it should be difficult to find out whether you are an Igbo man or Yoruba or Hausa. I should even be at a loss trying to trace you to an earthly place because you have been so transformed. You almost do not carry any negative traits that is associated with your territory. I should be surprised when you tell me, can anything good come out of Nazareth? But he's walked upon me. Listen to me. It is not enough to just embrace the engracing, the anointing. The empowerment of the spirit starts from within. So you find out that he empowers you to kill some things. They just die like that. Anger, bitterness, all of these things. Your life changes. People who look at you and say, I used to know this person. But you are changed. Not by your ability. But by the ability of the spirit. The empowerment within produces Christ-likeness. Produces growth and maturity. Stamina within. Then, the empowerment upon. In fact, let's look at Ezekiel 36, 27. Let me just give that one scripture. My apologies for stretching the time. It says, and I will put my spirit within you. Say within you. Someone say within you. And cause you to walk in my status, it says. And you shall keep my judgments and do them. Why? Because there is an empowerment within. Within. How do you love in such a wicked world? How do you show kindness in such a wicked world? You have to be empowered. Your feelings will betray you a thousand times. You will need an empowerment from within. Most people, what you call the fruit of the spirit, you see. Listen, you can impart a gift to a handkerchief. But you can't impart the fruit of the spirit to a handkerchief. A gift can come on anything animate or inanimate. But a fruit is proof of maturity. There is no tree that has a fruit at infancy. For every single gift, he matched it with a corresponding fruit. By the time the workings of the spirit is within you, let me tell you sincerely, you will truly become another man. That when people look at you, the only example they can tell is Jesus Christ. And it does not matter the background. It's a progressive work of the spirit, but that it is sponsored by the empowerment of the spirit. And so you can love even when it, is, it does not seem possible to love. You can give. You can be touched with the feelings of people's infirmity. Are we together? You who would not even help children before. Now something has happened to you, you are changed. Let me tell you the truth. I submit to you that if you have worked with the Holy Spirit and it does not translate to potent conversion from within, either your experience is a lie or you have not maximized that ministry of empowerment within. Hallelujah. Because it does not seem marketable to embrace the power within. Nobody will most likely sow a seed for you for being very nice. If you, if you raise somebody from a wheelchair quickly, you can say, come and take this estate and go. But for being a person of solid character, the results usually take a long time before you see the benefits. So most people will not want to pursue that. It is easy to pursue the one that brings, has a lot of charismatism around it. But you see, in the realm of the spirit, let me tell you, the things that may not seem to matter in this realm, that is what measures stature in the spirit. Are we together? It says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5. There was a mindset, there was an understanding, the workings of the spirit, hanging on the cross, and yet looking at John and looking at all these people. Same thing happened to the Matthias, Philip, uh, uh, when, when Philip was, uh, Stephen was about to be Matthias. Empowerment within, and then now empowerment upon. Micah 3 8. Micah 3 8. The Spirit helpeth. But truly I am full of power. How? By the Spirit of the Lord. I am full of power. Power to do. Power to manifest. Power to go to the nations. Power to pray. 
power to heal the sick power to redefine possibilities in the lives of people no man was born automatically with power ladies and gentlemen men and women by blindly walking with this spirit of grace they encounter tremendous levels of power i can tell you with all humility if you truly encounter the genuine power of the holy spirit not a semblance of it your life will never be the same not as a preacher not as a businessman you may have heard me say it he said thou anointest my head with oil my cup runneth over he does not anoint cups the cup only shows what is on your head if your cup is empty don't blame the cup it is that there is nothing on your head you anoint my head it is not my head that shows it my cup runneth over I'm under the shadow of your wings your influence is all over me I am under the shadow of your wings your influence is all over me Philippians chapter 4 and verse 13 we're going to pray now look at what the Bible says this will be my parting scripture I can do what an arrogant statement how can a man stay in the world of men pastor Jerry and dare to make such a statement you can do all things do you know how many things are there to be done I can do all things means I can go anywhere I can see anybody how dare you make such a statement where did you come from who is your father what leverage did he give you yet the apostle will say regardless what you bring before me here is my verdict I can do how many things <laughs> now listen 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 you go and stand in front of the road in your city and shout this statement and see how many people will look at you and say I used to respect you thinking you are humble but I'm disappointed you can do all things how do you talk to a man who does not want to talk to you is part of all things how do you raise the money to build something of a, a multi-billion project with integrity how do you lay hands on someone who has been sick for 25 years stage 4 cancer I can do all things please hear me run conference I came to release a grace on you tonight please listen please listen I want to show you a mystery and then we'll pray I can do all things who makes such a statement in our world today did you not know what happened during COVID you can do all things are you the one who keeps your life Paul would say I can do all things if he stopped there we would have edited that statement and charged him for foolishness immaturity pride and the manifestation of the flesh if Paul stopped there with those five words we would even legitimately edit that and strike it and say in learning Paul learn other aspects but when you get here jump it but here is my message tonight leave the first five read the remaining one to read through Christ one more time now read the first five then finish it with the first five are you ready one to read you didn't get it right through Christ which strengthened me I can do all things so he tells you if you see me moving from nation to nation be careful while you clap explain there is an agency when you see that I can do all things it is not because I am sufficient in myself I have found a secret in the spirit that the Christ can strengthen a man that Christ can strengthen a business can strengthen a man of God an ordinary man 
you can dare to say regardless the causes, regardless the limitations within my city, regardless what they think can come out or cannot come out of me, that here is my verdict on the strength of this revelation, I can do all things, not some things. To say some things will be limiting the power that backs me through Christ. Through Christ, which strengtheneth me. So when you hear the testimonies that happen through the prayer platforms, when you see the mighty things that God is doing through your ministry, thank God for the man, but make sure you look well. See the olive trees too. Make sure you look well and see that beyond ordinary men is a mighty God that stands behind them. No man can just make progress. Men do not rise just by willpower. Hear me? It takes more than willpower. It takes more than determination. Every factor fails when the Holy Ghost is not there. Value fails when it's not there. Knowledge fails when it's not there. Skill will be barren and important when it's not there. Abarike sopras kadesh katilakata. I can do all things. I can do all things. You may be ordinary. My precious brother, my precious sister, you may be ordinary, watching from across the globe, wondering, can anything good come out of my life? I introduce you to the ministry of the helper, the paraclete. He is not a politician. He is not a king. He is not an elected person. The spirit of the living God, who helps ordinary men to command tremendous levels of power, can I tell you, never laugh at a man who has submitted to the ministry and the help of the Holy Spirit. You will bury your head in shame for the rest of your life. Many of you will prefer running around looking for men and women of influence who can help you directly and yet ignore the greatest helper. Did the Bible not say except the Lord builds a house? It says they labor in vain. He never said they labor. They will not labor, but it is in vain that build it. That except the Lord watches the city. The watchman watched, but in vain, the Bible says that it is vain to wake up early in the morning, Nigerians hear me, and to sleep late at night, only to eat the bread of sorrow. Only God can give men rest. Man of God, respectfully speaking, please hear me. There is a fountain that is greater than your limitation. My uncle promised to give me money to build a church. It's a recipe for frustration. When I sense you, lackest thou anything? The helper. We stand today by the privilege of God's grace as ordinary men who have been helped by God. He signed his signature upon our lives that the nation may lend the spirit again. That when an ordinary man unite with an extraordinary God the destiny becomes extraordinary so he says there is this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of power man of God hear me do not give up on your call and don't try to look for fame and try to move around saying invite me leave all that nonsense and stay with the Holy Spirit stay with the Holy Spirit you're a music artist. Don't jump from pillar to post saying, stay with the Holy Spirit. The greatest way to make yourself known is to make him known. Stay with the Spirit of God. In the place of prayer, in the place of fellowship, in the place of building. You see, let me warn you. Let me warn you. Walking with the Holy Spirit is usually not profitable when you start. 
So I warn you so that Satan, who is the master of the flesh, does not beguile you into naming your submission to him a waste of your time. If it is God you are working with, you will be a fool for a very long time before the wisdom behind his dealings with you is revealed. So I'm giving you a word of caution. <laughs> Jesus was born of the spirit, but it took him 30 years of living supposedly an aimless life. But at 30, when he came in power, in three and a half years, he wrote something that cannot be erased forever. When you walk with the Holy Spirit, let me tell you the truth, there is a side effect. Because you will have to give up on your will many times. And that will put you in a position of perpetual insecurity in the flesh. I don't know the name of where I'm going, but I trust you who is leading me. And like a baby who is walking, even in the midst of your confusion, one step after another, while people laugh at you, you keep following. At a time, you will ask yourself, God, where are we going? What are you doing with my life? But I can leave you with an assurance. If it is the God of the Bible leading you, the day he presents you to your world like a trophy, he will sign upon your life and it will become clear to all men that the God of the universe has shown you help. Let's pray. The one you helped has come to worship you. The one you helped has come to worship you. You are helper. You're my help. Has come to worship me. The one you have. I want you to pray a sincere prayer. Lord, I lean not on my own understanding. I submit to the help of the Spirit. Someone open your mouth and pray. I submit to the help of the Holy Spirit. Spirit of the living God, come and help me in ministry. Come and help my family. Come and help my life. I'm tired of wallowing around in pride. I give up. I have guessed my own formula and done everything I know to do. It's only left me in pain. I submit to you. Spirit of the living God, Maranatha, come. 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 Someone pray just for a minute from the depth of your heart. This is a mighty church of prayer. Help, oh God. I will lift up my eyes onto the hills. He said, from whence cometh my help? My help cometh from the Lord, the maker of the heavens and the earth. Hallelujah. Let me stand in faith with the grace that is upon this house and this altar and just speak over your life. Listen, some of you may need to go back and listen to this teaching again and cry before the Lord and say 2023 cannot be like 2022 again. I've seen the difference. I've seen how I walk by my own strength. Now I want the Holy Spirit to help me. As a man of God, you will preach and be tired. You will do everything you do and be tired. But when he comes, Jesus said, I have many things to tell you. I have many things to show you. Hmm. But when he, the spirit of truth is come, he says, he will guide you. Very simple formula, yet very difficult. 
This is the reason why we do not glory in the flesh. As much as we thank God for all the human honor, the applause that we receive, and to him be all the glory. But I tell you sincerely, any man who knows the Holy Spirit is helplessly submissive to him. Because to live without him is like standing in shame. You are programming shame to your life. Father, in the name of Jesus, I stand in partnership with the grace that is upon this house. And I pray for someone, maybe a man of God, maybe a woman of God, maybe a prophet, maybe an apostle, maybe a business person, maybe a mother, maybe a student, maybe a politician or some head of parliament somewhere who is in need of potent results by the spirit you've stretched yourself from pillar to post from border to border and now by this message you have come to a point of acknowledgement that the missing factor in truth is the holy spirit maybe you have been pursuing power and you have ignored him remember what i taught you you receive power after that a relationship with him embracing him as a the helper who comes to help your limitation is the key to an enviable life i pray for you the grace to hunger after this ministry of the holy spirit receive it right now in jesus name Amen. some of you by this night you will return and the spirit of god will begin to reveal things to you he will open the pages of your destiny and with precision he will begin to guide you. As a result of that guidance, some of you will need to make a 180 degrees U-turn because the direction you are currently following has nothing to do with your destiny. May grace be revealed, released upon you to make that turn if the need arises. In the name of Jesus Christ. It is my prayer that at the end of this year, as a result of this conference, that you will look at your life and it will be evident to you and to all that you have been helped by God. May Ebenezer rise for you. The one who helps men. The one who has helped your pastor, helped his wife, helped this ministry. I declare that he's helping you right now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Can you give me a minute, Pastor Jerry, to make an altar call? Will that be fine, please? I just sense in my heart, my apologies, I've stretched the time. I need to make an altar call. When Pastor Jerry was prompting people, I heard so many people shouting from multiple overflows. And it is very important in a conference like this that when we gather and hear the word of God and pray and cry, it is important that we give people an opportunity to make it right with Jesus. So hear me, whether you are in the main auditorium or any of the overflows, or perhaps you are watching from across the globe, from Europe, um, America, somewhere in Africa, or even in this nation. We are getting to a time where we must never trivialize <coughs> salvation. Sometimes we make it look like the miracle of salvation is that cheap. It took Jesus' his life for that to happen. And there's someone who came for this meeting tonight who is saying, Apostle, if you will give me an opportunity, I truly want to make it right with Jesus. I do not want to leave this conference tonight without having a functional relationship with Jesus. Or there may be someone who is saying, I remember making this decision, but as it is right now, my life has gone haywire. Everything is scattered. I cannot even say that I have the assurance of salvation. I want to rededicate my life to Jesus. Now, here's what I want you to do for me. I will plead that in an orderly manner, those who are making that decision, if any, within this place, may I please request, if you can, to just gently step forward and come here. And all the other, all the other overflows, I want you to just step forward to the front of your LED screens. I'll just count one to five. I'm working on borrowed time. There has to be someone within this room and around who is saying, I want to make it right with Jesus Christ. There is no point pretending. Come. I'm counting one to five now. If you belong to that category, come. Let's celebrate them as they come. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Streams of joy. Is this the best you can do? 
God bless you. God bless you. Keep coming. Keep coming. Just spread yourselves here so that you don't inconvenience those who are standing. Thank you. Now, I see that the counselors are giving you a card. So whether you are here or those outside, for those who are making this salvation prayer, I believe that um, the various platforms that you're connecting from should give you a link where you indicate that you gave your life to Jesus Christ and then there will be a system to follow you up and you can indicate from whatever nation you're connecting from and that this is a decision that you made and the Lord himself will give you a new beginning. For all of you who are here, a form is being given to you now. I don't know if you will have all the time to fill it, but then I will pray with you and you are required to fill that form. And please, if and when you are called, your attention is called, do cooperate with all those who are responsible for the follow-up. This is for your salvation. I salute you on behalf of Jesus and even the angel over this house for making this bold decision to come to Jesus. Very quickly, let me request that you lift your right hand. You may just pause your filling the form right now. And all of you, I'm about to lead you to pray. Please make sure. Okay, I see an email there. Salvation at streamsofjoy.org. So do well to send an email immediately and say, Pastor Jerry, I just made this decision for Jesus and I'm ready to walk with him all the days of my life and you will be followed up adequately. Say this after me, lifting your right hand as a sign of surrender. Say, Lord Jesus. Say it again. Say, Lord Jesus, tonight I have heard your word. I have been convicted by your spirit. Right now, I believe that you died for me. I believe that you rose again for my justification. I receive Jesus into my heart as my Savior, as my Lord, and as my King. I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life. From tonight and forever, I declare that I am saved. I am a child of God. I go forward ever and backward never. Amen. Father, thank you for these precious ones. Your word declares that as many who will come to you, you will in no wise cast away. By the authority of scripture, I declare your sins forgiven. In the name of Jesus, I call you bona fide recipients of the life of God. The power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over your life. Receive the grace to walk in righteousness. I commend you to the ministry of the Holy Spirit and to the word of God. May you be grounded and established in righteousness. You go forward ever and backward never. In Jesus' name I pray. Now very quickly, I'd like to request that you follow the aisles. There are people stretching their hands.